Hi everyone, welcome back to Pediatric Therapy Essentials. My name is Dr. Heather Sossaman and I'm a pediatric physical therapist. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking about muscle tone, so stick around. Hi everyone and welcome back. Well, as I said, this week we're going to be talking about the topic of muscle tone. And I feel like this is one of those topics that is widely talked about, but not always understood. So this week we're going to dive into it. Did you know that there's over 600 muscles in the human body? And they control everything from pumping your blood, to moving food through your stomach and intestines, and moving your body. And these muscles are divided into three distinct categories, smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and skeletal muscle. Smooth muscle controls most of our bodily functions, things like digestion, blood flow, and urination. And smooth muscles are not under our voluntary control. Instead, our brain controls them and controls all of these functions without us even realizing that it's happening. Cardiac muscle does what you would expect. It allows our heart to contract and relax to pump oxygenated blood throughout our body. And just like our smooth muscle, cardiac muscle is not under our voluntary control. Instead, the brain and a special group of cells called pacemaker cells control the functions of the heart. The remainder of the muscles in our body are skeletal muscles, and they are under our voluntary control. So muscles like the biceps and the quadriceps are controlled by us when we choose to lift a weight at the gym or kick a soccer ball. When we are at home laying on the sofa watching TV, our muscles are relaxed, which is different from how active they are when we're running around and playing a game of soccer. And although we are in this relaxed position, our muscles continue to have a small amount of tension in them, which is called muscle tone. And this small amount of tension is what allows us to maintain that position even though we're relaxed. It essentially keeps us from turning into a puddle on the floor. The amount of tone or tension in our muscles is something that's controlled neurologically by our brain and nervous system, and it's unique to each person. The amount of tone or tension each of us has in our muscles falls within a range of what's considered typical. Some of us have higher muscle tone and some of us have lower muscle tone. There are conditions in which a person's muscle tone falls outside of that range of typical. So they can have higher than typical muscle tone, which is considered high tone, or lower than typical tone, which is considered low tone. When an individual has high muscle tone, that means that the relaxed position of the muscle has a lot of tension in it. So it often can feel like the muscle is contracting even though the person is at rest. Individuals that are diagnosed with high muscle tone usually have other neurologic conditions such as cerebral palsy, multiple sclerosis, or have had a stroke. When low muscle tone is present, the relaxed or resting position of the muscle has much less tone in it. The muscle can often feel mushy or floppy. Individuals with low muscle tone may have conditions such as Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, and muscular dystrophy. I know muscle tone can sometimes be a bit of a head scratcher, so let's try an example and see if that helps. Let's begin with a person with typical muscle tone. They begin at point A, which is their muscles at rest. Then their muscles start working so that they can achieve the desired action, which is kicking the ball. Next, let's consider a person with low muscle tone. They begin at point B, which is a muscle position with even less tension than a muscle at rest. Next, they begin working to get simply to that resting position, and then they continue working to try to get to the desired action, which is kicking a ball. So as you can see, this simple action takes twice the work. Finally, let's consider a person with high muscle tone. A person with high muscle tone also begins at point B, but with a different set of challenges. Their starting position is a muscle with more tension than it would normally have at rest. Their muscle starts working to try to overcome the tension already present in the muscle to get to that, quote, resting position. And then it must continue working to get to the action of kicking the ball. So as you can see, again, the simple action takes twice as much work. 
As we've established, muscle tone is controlled neurologically, so it's not something that we can change or fix through therapy. But that doesn't mean that kids with low or high muscle tone can't benefit from therapy. Instead, we just need to have the right expectations. Therapy is focused on helping children attain their highest level of independence and function despite their muscle tone. And the way we do that is individual to each child. However, there are three categories that we tend to focus on when working with kids with atypical muscle tone. The first category is muscle strength. And what's really important to understand here is that muscle tone and muscle strength are two very different things. Muscle tone is involuntary. It's controlled by our neurologic system and we can't do anything about it. Muscle strength, however, is defined as the force created by a muscle when it contracts. And that is under our voluntary control and it can be changed by strengthening and work. There are tons of fun ways to work on strengthening with kids but we have to always keep in mind that a child with atypical muscle tone can become fatigued very easily. The effort it takes to contract their muscles and perform a movement is far greater than individuals with typical muscle tone. So this fatigue needs to be validated. Kids need to know that we realize how hard this is for them and that we appreciate all their hard work. Our next category is posture and positioning. Because individuals with low muscle tone don't have as much tension in their muscles, their posture can really be affected. They often demonstrate things like a forward head, a kyphotic or rounded back, and a protruding belly. These postures often occur because a child is relying more on their bones for support rather than their muscles which don't have enough tone and can easily become fatigued. The posture of individuals with high muscle tone can also be greatly affected. The postures they use are often dictated by the muscle groups with the highest tone in them. In therapy, we can work on strength to improve these postures and provide the child with adaptive equipment to support them in the best alignment possible when their muscles are not able to do so. Our final category is balance and coordination. Children with atypical muscle tone can often have difficulty with skills that require balance and coordination. The altered level of tone in their muscles means that their muscles don't react as quickly as they need to when performing an activity that requires balance and coordination skills. So through strengthening, skill practice, and other techniques, therapists help children to improve their abilities in these areas. That was a lot of information. Pat yourself on the back if you made it all the way through this video. Since we talked about so much, let me do a quick review for you of the highlights. First. Muscle tone is the resting tension in our muscles. Second, muscle tone is controlled neurologically, not under our voluntary control. Three, muscle tone cannot be changed, but muscle strength can. And finally, therapists can help children with too much or too little muscle tone maximize their potential through activities that work on strength, posture, positioning, balance, and coordination. If you'd like more information on today's topic, please head over to my website, pediatrictherapyessentials.com, and check out the blog post that goes along with today's video. I really hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, and consider subscribing to this channel if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thanks for stopping by today. I hope you guys have a great week, and I'll see you next Saturday. Bye.